Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you again for joining me. And this week, I'm focused on dementia with regards to COVID-19 infection and vaccination. And that's primarily because all of the research seems to be pointing to the relevance of the spike protein. And so this is highlighting the upcoming webinar. This is on Thursday. You can see it right here. There is a link below for you to take a, a to register for this on Thursday. Um, this Thursday, uh, the 14th of September at 7 p.m. And you click on the link below and it will take you to the registration page. It is free and you can put in a donation if you're interested. We'd always appreciate that. And we'll be sharing with you some of the principles, foundations of dementia and dementia research. Now, this has always been my passion. And as I had said before, when COVID came, I used the techniques that I do in dementia research and applied them to COVID-19. And this is why I came up with autoimmunity all the way in March, 2020 as being central for severe COVID-19. It's interesting that as the diseases have evolved, we are starting to see a whole spectrum of diseases, and this is extremely relevant in the context of dementia. Now, it's important to note that people oftentimes look at dementia as when someone has cognitive impairment, where they can't remember um, their problems with speech, you have to remember that is down the line from the damage. So the damage can occur 15, 10 to 15 years prior to the symptoms being present. And one of the things that I feel strongly about is that we have to very aggressively try and identify the characteristics and the patterns associated with mild cognitive impairment or even just cognitive impairment so that it is addressed quite early. That's very unique thinking and some research, as I said, that I've been doing for many years, probably 12 years before the COVID pandemic. And I'm starting to bring that forward and show how it's related with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'll be sharing with you a few simple points about where I think this is relevant. And I'm sharing with you now a slide. This one here is the research paper that was recently published, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein accumulation in the skull meninges brain axis, potential implications for long-term neurological complications in post-COVID-19. It's a preprint paper, okay? That means it hasn't yet been fully peer-reviewed. It was posted in April 2023, but it's highly relevant because of what they were doing. Actually, the researchers were looking at mouse models, but they also looked at some of the evidence from human infection. So for people who were infected with COVID-19 and the accumulation of spike protein in the skull. I was very, very focused on one particular thing that it had said in the paper, and I'll show you this here. So they were looking at the fact that the spike protein has been shown to affect endothelial function in vitro and in vivo, and induce inflammatory responses after injection in mice. Okay, so that's fine. They realized, however, that such responses can also be observed in patients has not been thoroughly investigated. They recognized the long persistence of the spike protein in immune cells, at least 15 months, and in a blood um, patients' blood plasma, at least 12 months in the preprint. So they are recognizing that the issue here with regards to inflammatory responses in the blood vessels in the brain could be connected with circulating spike protein. And if you've been following the research recently, I was highlighting that a recent uh, preprint again identified circulating spike protein, even from not just infection, but even from mRNA vaccination for up to 187 days. So the circulation of spike protein is really the bit that I'm focused on today. There are far other implications, but just for today, I just want to highlight a few concepts. So what they had shown in this paper, they had a, a lovely image um, on, on the paper here, and this is showing 
the brain, the skull. This is the skull here. Uh, this is the space, the arachnoid space or subarachnoid space. And then this is brain tissue. And wherever you see purple here, that spike protein. So they were seeing spike protein in the subarachnoid space, in the marrow, inside the brain tissue itself, and critically, in the blood vessels of the brain. And so this is the bit that I am now focused on, and this is where I'm talking about vascular dementia. And vascular dementia, based on the research that I've done before, is quite is different in a sense to the other forms of dementia. So say, for instance, Alzheimer's with amyloid buildup, or if you have Parkinson's or Lewy body type dementia with alpha synuclein buildup in the brain. In the context of vascular dementia, it... I, I look at it slightly differently because it's about damage to blood vessels and inadvertent damage to neurons. So it's not direct damage, damage to neurons. It's just that if the neurons don't have uh, adequate blood supply, they will die. And so in that context here, this is now me breaking it down a little bit more. So you have here an example or an image of uh, brain capillaries. So this here is the brain. And they've done a cut section here of one of the blood vessels. And you can see here, this is the blood vessel and very tight endothelial um, connection. So in between these cells, it's very tight. And then on top of it, you have a podocyte of a neuron on top of the blood vessels. So this is an example of what happens with regards to the blood-brain barrier. It's extremely important in the sense that it protects the brain from damage um, because of things, substances in the bloodstream. So the blood-brain barrier has always been an essential part of protection of the brain. And you have an even more detailed picture here. And again, I'm showing you a brain arteriole, and this is surrounded by some muscle cells. And then as it goes down into the smaller capillaries, here is a cut section of one of them. And you can see here, this red or dark maroon part is the endothelial cell. And around it is a pericyte. So it finds this very tight, um, uh, tight situation where only the nutrients can leak out. And then even around that, there's a third layer that has some spaces, which is the astrocytic end feed. This is for the neurons. So it's a very sophisticated system and it prevents the brain or protects the brain from everything else that's happening in the bloodstream. And so this is an important part of how the brain functions. And in vascular dementia, we would be seeing damage to these blood vessels. And as you damage the blood vessels, you can then end up with damage to the surrounding neurons. And that's why it's slightly different, in my opinion, or from my research than, say, Alzheimer's dementia. There's often overlap, mixed dementia, but it, the, if you have a background already of al, um, amyloid buildup and you have vascular damage, the dementia is likely to progress much faster. So how does this relate in re to the COVID pandemic? Well, here is an example of circulating spike proteins. Now, as I said, that this has now been identified to occur from both sources. Anywhere that you can get spike protein, it seems that it can circulate for extended periods of time. So in this image, I've just demonstrated that you just have to imagine either the full spike or pieces of the spike are circulating in some people, not necessarily everyone. What we're not sure of yet is exactly how many numbers, but that research should be done. So within this context, I've then created a diagram to show you what I would think could happen. And this, you have to be clear, is my interpretation of the research that I'm seeing. And I'm showing you here, this is an example of a normal capillary. And it usually is just about wide enough for a red blood cell to pass through. So these here are red blood cells passing through the capillary. And you can imagine that it's releasing oxygen so that it's going into the brain tissue. In the context of microclots, what my suspicion is, because microclots are quite common in long COVID and anywhere that you have circulating spike protein from whatever source. So in this image here, I'm showing you a picture and this here in purple, hidden behind, is a spike protein. 
What you can then have are these what we call neutrophil extracellular traps. They then try and trap anything that they think is foreign. It could be a bacteria, it, it could be a spike protein, it could be a virus. They then kill themselves to make an almost net to trap the spike protein. But in the process of doing that, it then leads to a backup of blood in this capillary. And in the longer term, this process can lead to a microclot. And this microclot then stops the blood flow beyond this clot. And so that small area of brain could then be damaged. And that's the bit that's concerning me, is that there, there is a huge amount of blood vessels in the brain. And as with anything, it's about percentages. So if you have a small percentage that are affected, your only symptoms may be slight brain fog. But my big concern is when we look at the cohort of people who already have a degree of brain damage, either mild cognitive impairment, so they may have some degree of amyloid deposition. When you have this kind of process occurring on top of that, you could see a very rapid acceleration in terms of the dementia. That's my concern that if we don't aggressively research this and try and work out strategies to mitigate it, the implications in the medium term, and these things rarely happen suddenly, they tend to happen over a period of time. But if you leave it and you don't address it, what then could happen is that it reaches a point where you are unable to manage or stop the deterioration in the brain. That's why I think this is such an important topic. It's something that I think we all have to think about from the scientific perspective to try and make a difference with regards to helping patients in the longer run. So that's just a quick summary. And for those who are interested in learning more about dementia, please register for the webinar. We'll talk about the fundamentals. And in time, I'll be aiming to share more research about what I think could be done in the near future to protect the brains of ourselves and our loved ones. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.